You know, you're you're being ridiculous. Okay. You're being absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I saw that. The, okay. the, the police officer that I just talked to down there, I just told him, I'm coming from Ojai. I'm trying to get to Carpinteria. There's no way to get through. He said, go ahead and see if they'll let you through. Okay. You, you were sitting on the side of the road. I have my lights on. Turn There's around. a bunch now, of police with their lights on. Turn around and head back, okay? Why, why, I don't know. The road is closed. It's flooded right here. I understand. I just came through. It's closed right now, sir. I, I just came through and it. you're not coming back. Turn around and go back, sir. Thank you for getting myself wet. We're just trying to make it home. Um, I don't know. We just went through that crossing that that cop just can uh, almost blew a gasket over. But he's telling me it's closed, so I can't go back home. This is all closed. There's literally I literally could have drove through. There's a little creek that's overflowing. I could have drove through it. I just drove through it. He won't let me go back. My dogs are at home alone right now. My generator's running, and uh, all the roads are closed, and we can't get back home. They won't even let us sit on the side of the road and wait for it to open. Let's just park a little bit more down. We don't want to get us in trouble. We don't no, just I just don't understand why we can't wait. So they got the road closed off. They got the 150 and the 101 closed off. So we can't get home. That same cop that was giving me shit is uh, now kicking us all off the side of the road because we're waiting. Uh, there's probably me and maybe like six other cars. Caltrans doesn't say when they're going to open the road. There's, you can't get a hold of anybody and the cops won't talk to you. Uh, if you go up there and try to talk to them, they just want to give you a ticket and start screaming at you. We parked off the side off into a residential area so he can't kick us out. Uh, we don't really have a choice because I got to make it home, so I don't know. Not really sure what to do. We got just into the Ojai County line, um, and they they shut off all the roads, and we got stuck basically in between Ojai and um, and Carpinteria, and there was no way for us to get home. So we drove back and forth trying to find a way back home. We ended up. Uh, waiting until about, I want to say it was like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Uh, we drove up the 150. Once the police left, we, we, we took off up the 150. And uh, well, we had to go through a couple river crossings and um, we, we caught a mudslide. We made it through. There was a bunch of people that got stuck, but uh, there was a casualty. So when we were going through the mud, I think I hit a rock or something, and yeah, we did some damage. Um, it's the evap canister. It sits up next to the fuel tank. That's broken off in there. It's not a good sign usually. It's just plastic. I am headed to pick apart in Santa Paula to go look for a little electrical connector um, and partially to check out the, I've looked at a few of the diagrams for this little car. Um, I can't find anything online that actually shows where this electrical connector um, is missing. So when we, when we went through that mud, it ripped the uh, EVAP canister off of the uh, bottom of the CRV and it took some things with it that uh, I guess I didn't pick up off the ground or were lost while we were driving. I'm gonna go and see if they have one. Hopefully they have one. That would be nice, because then I could, you know, see the evap canister intact 
and see where these electrical connectors or whatever that I'm missing is. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, yeah, we'll see, hopefully. Wish me luck, huh? I'm looking for a CRV. I've seen some Hondas, but so far it's not looking so good. These are all sedans, I think. Crazy number. Uh, where are we? There we go. Where we go? There it is. So four CRV right here. Oh man, Landon, this is gonna suck. Oh, and of course it's back here. And. Oh, uh, looks like everything's gone. Bummer. Uh, tank, evap, canister, everything's gone. Yeah, bummer. It's all sitting. There's a bunch of shit sitting in the back seat, though. Hmm. Bummer. There we go. This looks like an evap canister. There's an evap canister right here. Okay, and then, so I'm missing this solenoid, and I'm missing this connector. All right, so I was able to find the uh, evac canister, which is awesome. Um, and yeah, that's the reason it's thrown coats, because I'm, I'm missing a few things. <laughs> uh, I'm missing like two solenoids, and I got the, uh, so, I've got an extra evap canister. I'll probably switch this one in. And I got the the whole cage that was all bent up. And uh, yeah, so that's awesome. So I was missing this connector. Shouldn't go mud whomping in your uh, in your CRV. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna end up damaging something. So those two here, are the other two right here, and then oh man. Yeah, here's the other two that broke off and I gotta splice into that one. Alrighty. So the good news is we made it through that mud. Bad news is it ended up costing me a little bit of time and money to fix my car. I think, you know, we, we probably could have waited, but it took him it took him two days to uh, to open up the the road, and I couldn't leave my dogs home for a couple days. So we just did what we had to do, and luckily we made it safe, and no one got hurt. Well, except for the CRV, anyways. All right. You know, I have to give this car a lot of praise, man. It's been through some hell, and it just keeps going. I was pretty lucky to be able to find this thing um, literally sit in the back seat of, of that car because that was, that was a uh, definitely a, a score.
because this thing got bent to sh so we're gonna have to force this thing where it's gotta go I think. Uh, let's hope this is it up. This thing takes about 100 miles to run through the uh, mission, the EVAP system. So you gotta drive it 100 miles before it'll trip the code. There's the EVAP purge solenoid, the fuel tank pressure solenoid, and a two-way valve. I, I got all that from the junkyard, replaced it, was still throwing a P0497 code. Took all the, uh, I took all the lines on the, on the back apart just to make sure nothing was clogged, checked the EVAP canister and all those things. There are some videos on YouTube that will show you exactly how to test an EVAP canister to make sure it's good, it's not clogged. Mine was a little different. So when the EVAP canister got ripped off, there was a um, there's an open vacuum tube sitting in the back. So it sucked up some, uh, some debris. And I gotta open the hood real quick. This line right here comes from the rear evap canister and it runs through here so i blew this line all out and this basically is just you want to dis if you want to blow this out you want to uh, disconnect your evap canister and blow it out what i found was there was a bunch of rocks and stuff in here that was plugging this up so you want to take this apart also if 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 you drove through mud or something like that more than likely this sucked up this line sucked up a bunch of rocks and stuff and and will end up giving you a low purge flow um, fault. If you need to pull it apart and then blow it out with some air or um, clean it out. Um, but after that, now it's not throwing codes anymore. Whenever you got an EVAP problem with a vehicle, if you don't understand the EVAP system, it can be very complicated because there are a lot of hoses. But technically, there's only one vacuum hose that comes from the EVAP canister to the front of the vehicle. And if that gets disconnected and you drive through the rain or you drive through mud, it will get clogged with stuff. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult to figure out. This poor little car. <laughs> Leave us a comment. Thanks a lot for watching. See you guys around.